Middle Eastern migrants are trying to invade Poland. Again. Now, this isn't the first time in Poland's history that they've had to send back waves of Middle Easterners from invading their country. But at least this time, they aren't being commanded by a sultan. Uh, so this has been the consequence of, of course, the migrant crisis. And it seems that uh, Belarus is weaponizing uh, waves of human beings against Poland's borders in an attempt presumably to destabilize the European Union. Uh, but I guess what they didn't count on is the fact that, well, it's the Polish. Uh, they're, they're not very, uh, they're not very um, progressive in their view of migration. And they are very um, uh, traditional in their view of borders. And so they're not having any of it. God bless Poland. Eastern Europe in general kind of puts us to shame. It does in many ways. They're doing the correct thing for the survival of their countries. And thank God Poland exists. Uh, but this has been going on for several weeks now. But the tensions seem to have been increasing and intensifying dramatically uh, in the past couple of days. And the issue does have enormous significance for the future of the European Union. Especially in the attitude that the European Union has had to take towards mass and irregular migration, uh, what we would call illegal immigration. Uh, because you may remember that, go back four or five years, uh, Mama Merkel was beating the drum for more migrants, more migrants, let millions in. And somewhere around two million were allowed into Germany. Of course, Germany being the Schengen zone meant they could go anywhere in Europe. And uh, they were also trying to redistribute the migrants because they're a bunch of commies, uh, but by saying, you know, every country has to take their fair share. And of course, Poland and Hungary were like, we don't think so. And uh, that obviously was uh, um, a major point of contention and this appears to be getting the European Union to kind of change their perspective on mass migration so that's at least one positive that comes out of it but anyway so this is what Sky News reported Poland has accused Belarus of trying to cause a violent provocation following reports that hundreds of migrants are attempting to cross Poland's borders uh, Polish officials have said they're prepared to defend the frontier and have increased security measures deploying more than 12,000 soldiers up from the 10,000 that were there recent, uh, recently migrants attempted to force their way through the barbed wire at the crossing in Kuznica Oh, by the way, I'm going to pronounce all of this completely incorrectly. Uh, but that's what the Polish get for having such a bizarro language. I make no apologies. <laughs> the European Union has accused Belarus of engaging in a form of hybrid warfare by encouraging thousands of migrants from the Middle East and Africa to cross into EU countries via its borders. The bloc perceives this to be an act of revenge for Western sanctions on Minsk over human rights abuses, which we'll get into shortly. Uh, they say, uh, Deputy Foreign Minister... P-I-O-T-R-W-A-W-R-Z-Y-K. Piotr Warzik? Maybe. Maybe. Possibly. Maybe. <laughs> I hope I pronounced that completely wrong. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be disrespectful either, but look, you give me a break. I have trouble pronouncing French words. Um, Belarus wants, he says on public radio, Belarus wants to cause a major incident, preferably with shots fired and casualties, according to media reports. They're preparing for a major provocation near someplace and <laughs> there will be an attempt at a mass border crossing he says and it seems that he's probably right um the deputy interior minister tweeted that polish authorities again i'm just going to skip the names i'm really sorry uh, polish authorities are ready for any scenario based uh, while Poland security services described one of the videos as very worrying uh, latvia has called the situation alarming whereas lithuania has said it was moving additional troops to the border to pre prepare for a possible rise in migrant crossings Poland's border guard has reported incidents of hostile behavior and threats from Belarusian forces aimed at Polish forces across the border. So not good, all, all things considered. And so let's, uh, let's have a look at what's going on. If we can go for clip number one so you can see what's happening. <laughs> Thing. That is large numbers of well, I mean, like, probably a couple of thousand migrants throwing logs on the barbed wire fences and trees on the barbed wire fences to break them down. On the other side are ranks of Polish security forces. I mean, they're actively trying to destroy the border instead of killing them. I think that's probably all we need to watch about them, John. Um, so yeah, so that's them not respecting the fact that they're not being allowed in. It's pretty blatant. So yeah. And then you get uh, this next clip. If we can uh, play them chanting. German! 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 
that's about all you can see that one just because it goes on. I didn't have time to edit it. But as you can see, that's um, I guess what we call fighting age men. And one one child there though, oh. they did find a child. Show us uh, chanting German. Mm. Presumably, they want to get to Germany, where they have significant amounts of state-funded benefits. Uh, thanks, Mama Merkel, again. Now, the migrants aren't stupid. They know what they're doing. Uh, they, we've, we've got videos, in fact, of them essentially creating propaganda to manipulate the people at home watching, such as, as you can see in this one, uh, migrants finding a young lad, looks about, I don't know, 13, 14, something like that, and blowing smoke, cigarette smoke, into his eyes to record an interview uh, that can be then aired on CNN, MSNBC, and BBC, claiming that the Polish soldiers are tear-gassing poor children and things like this. So these poor crying children that they've made cry by blowing smoke in their eyes. Wow. Cynical. Very cynical. Uh, anyway... So, moving on, it seems that shots have been fired at the border. Now, I don't know the circumstance of this, but uh, we have a clip that shows it from GB News, if we can play that. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have no idea what's going on. Although, no one seems to be panicking, so I guess people firing into the air or something. Yeah, I guess people don't really mind that much by the looks of it. What saddens no. me is the fact that when they're blowing smoke into children's eyes and stuff, you can be guaranteed that there are people who are still going to fall oh, absolutely. for anything that comes as a result of it. You can guarantee CNN are going to unironically air this, saying, look, the Polish mm. forces are tear-gassing children. Oh, when they're clearly think, not. think of the children. Well... As a father, I am actually more susceptible to that argument now, but I'm not susceptible to people being deeply cynical. A, you shouldn't be there. B, you shouldn't be trying to manipulate the media. And C, go home. Um, <laughs> so I'm not very sympathetic, to be honest, considering in Britain we have th literally thousands of migrants like every week cr just sailing across the channel. Yep. Where are they getting these dinghies? And How can they afford dinghies? And the media consistently blames the people trying to keep them out of the country for them taking the incredibly reckless and dangerous yep. route of just sailing across the channel. As if France is not a safe country. Yeah. So why is this happening? Well, it seems to be the consequence of e the EU's restrictive re uh, measures uh, being placed on Belarus. Uh, this all started in August 2020 when the European imposed uh, restrictive measures on Belarus as a response to the nature of their 2020 presidential election. To which, which led to uh, Alexander Lukashenko being elected. Uh, they felt that this was illegitimate. They think the election was fraudulent and rigged. Fortified, if you will. Hmm. I think I'm allowed to talk about that fortification on YouTube. It's weird. Uh, and the result of intimidation and violent repression of peaceful protesters, opposition members and journalists. Uh, this seems to be the case, to be honest. You may remember the footage going around of people like laying in the streets and stuff like that it looked quite brutal to be honest so they're not they're not wrong that uh, belarus is a an eastern country um but anyway this led to the eu placing economic sanctions on belarus uh as uh, reported by the European Council. Tension uh, set a statement by the European Council, sorry, from June. Tensions between Belarus and the EU have intensified considerably since the EU strengthened these restrictions in June, uh, following the forced landing of a Ryanair flight in Minsk and the related detention of a journalist, in fact, two journalists. Uh, since these sanctions were implemented, Belarus has doubled down on its aggression against the EU uh, at the direct expense of a neighbouring country to the west, which was Poland. Uh, it is suspected that this is, uh, aggression is retaliation to the European Union's attempt to encroach on its political affairs and punish it economically for non-compliance, which it probably is. Uh, so there's a website called notesfrompoland.com, which has a fairly good explanation of the crisis on the Polish uh, Belarusian border. Uh, not not being an expert on these things, I'm going to rely on this. Uh, they say, this is a result of a deliberate campaign by the Belarusian authorities in response to sanctions imposed on the Lukashenko regime by European Union countries. Minsk is organising transport for foreigners or making this travel easier by readily providing Belarusian visas, offering to take them to the EU. Because, of course, why would migrants from the e Middle East want to be in Belarus? Belarus is a very poor Eastern European country, like with 8 million people in it. There's no reason for them to be there. Um, after ar arriving legally in Belarus, they are transported by the country's authorities to the border and forced to cross it. Belarus, put simply, are using the migrants as pawns uh, to put pressure on the EU and end the sanctions and to get, probably get them to stop interfering in their political affairs in general. The EU, as you may well expect, are not happy about this at all. 
they're accusing, as we covered earlier, Belarus of a hybrid attack. They published this response uh, from Ursula von der Leyen. Uh, she's accused Belarus of having launched a hybrid attack, saying the regime in Minsk... I love regime. Now, now we're using the word regime. That's, that's fine. I'll use the word regime for administrations that I don't think are legitimate now. Uh, in Minsk has instrumentalized human beings. They have put people on planes and literally pushed them towards Europe's borders. Uh, in much the same way that Erdogan was threatening to do, in fact. <laughs> uh, back in, like, 2017, Erdogan basically said, look, I've got four million Syrian migrants here, and if you don't give me billions of euros, I'm, gonna, I'm literally going to send them to Europe. And so the European Union paid him off. Um, possibly so gave into blackmail. Yeah, and it's not like Erdogan's like the world's most legitimate president either. What strong world leaders we have. Yeah, but I'm, uh, at least they're resisting in this case. Um, but uh, yeah, she said, let's call it what it is, a hybrid attack to destabilize Europe, uh, obviously expressly supporting the European Union states against Belarus. Uh, this uh, is not really an unreasonable response from the European Union. In fact, it's a surprising response, considering five years ago it would have been the complete opposite and they would have just bent over and spread their cheeks. Um, the article goes on that uh, von der Leyen also urged EU member states to adopt the legislative package on migration and asylum that the European Commission proposed last September. If you ask most Europeans, she said, they would agree that we should act to curb irregular migration, but also act to provide a refuge for those forced to flee. Okay, well, what are you going to do? How are you going to do that? How are you going to stop illegal immigration and you know mass migration, but also provide a refuge for those forced to flee? Who knows? Uh, this is, of course, bearing in mind the European Union's appalling record, as we just covered. Um, but um, it seems they haven't really learned that much. They're, they're, they're essentially serving two masters. They know that mass migration is deeply unpopular with the European population because they've been subjected to it for the last five years and it's gone very poorly. Uh, and they and so, But the thing is, they also know that this is completely in line with their sort of globalist, neoliberal, universal yeah. principles. If anything, it's shocking that they even just acknowledged that the people don't like it. Yeah, exactly. Well, no, that's exactly right. It, it's actually shocking that they've at least paid lip service to this and they can see, and what's more as well, is that they, they can see that Belarus and presumably other actors are using this as a way of destabilising Europe and they're weaponizing their own principles against them. Yeah, I mean, That's like, you, like you've said, it's not like Erdogan has explicitly stated such things in the past anyway. Yeah, and so it becomes apparent that this universalist commitment that the European Union has is in fact a major Achilles heel that much poorer and weaker states can use to weaponize against the European Union to the point where the European Union recognizes this is actually a threat to the stability of the entire continent. So it's an impressive just... How like Belarus has only got like eight million people in it. It's impressive how small a state can make the entire European Union tremble by just pulling on one of these principles. You know, really makes you think. But uh, anyway, so uh, <laughs> some rather predictably have identified an opportunity in the crisis, such as Amnesty International. Thanks for this, Amnesty. Uh, they they re they say this. Uh, they they use spatial reconstruction techniques to show how a group of 32 people from Afghanistan was left stranded at the border between Poland and Belarus without food, clean water, shelter, and medicine for weeks, despite attempting to claim asylum in Poland. Or why don't they claim asylum in Belarus? The Belarusians let them in, trafficked them across the country, then dumped them there. What did they think they were doing? Polish and Belarusian border guards have been keeping a group trapped in a small area on the border for over a month, as both countries avoid responsibility for the four women, 27 men, and one 15-year-old girl. Really gives you an impression of the kind of demographic breakdown of the migrants as well, doesn't it? Mm. Mostly men. Uh, but uh, Poland isn't allowing them in, of course. Um, I, doubt, uh, the, I don't doubt that Amnesty International know this already, but... Um, they're using this, again, as a kind of moral weapon against the European Union, Poland specifically, because, of course, they've got to provide them with food, clean water and shelter. Um, but this is going to encourage more migrants to come because, I mean, if we just turn up and get dumped there by Belarus, you're obligated now by the European Union's moral standards to feed and clothe and shelter us. Uh, you're not going to renege on that uh, obligation. And so why should more not come until the problem becomes unmanageable? And so Poland were like, well, actually, we have an idea. We're going to build a wall. A really big, beautiful wall. 
get <laughs> Belarus to pay for it. Yeah, hopefully they can get Belarus to pay for it. Um, this is as reported by Rory. Uh, Polish lawmakers drafted legislation that will permit the uh, the construction of a $400 million wall on the Belarusian border. Uh, it was uh, approved by the Polish Council of Ministers um, after amnesty uh, crying like a bunch of girls. Um the Poland, Latvia, Lithuania, and Germany have all reported an increase in illegal immigration, which they believe is a result of Lukashenko's program of sending migrants, alleged program of sending migrants to the border. Don't sue me, Lukashenko. I'd hate to have to have all this out in court. Um, in the last month, uh, 2,000 uh, Middle Eastern migrants uh, have crossed the German border, traveling from Poland to Belarus. And uh, in early attempts to stem the crossings, Poland's barbed wire fence, as we saw in the video earlier, was being trampled down by the migrants. So note the dramatic shift in tone, though, about all of this. It's quite interesting. But the, the question is, how did they get there in the first place? How did they get there? Um, can we get the last link up a second, John? This is the map. The, la the final link, please. The world map, yeah. Right, so you can see the Middle East. Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, Iran, Iraq. Going into Asia, where Pakistan, Afghanistan, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan are. How did they get to Belarus? Did they just walk over? No, they'd have to go through a massive country. Hmm. A massive country that isn't a big fan of the European Union. Why aren't they going through Ukraine? Why aren't they at the Polish border through the Ukrainian border? Weird. Or the, you know, the Latvian or Estonian borders or whatever. You know, like, no, they, they've come through Belarus. And that's probably because I think Ukraine hates Russia. Because there are many, many allegations that Russia is, of course, behind this. Now, if we can go back to the previous one, uh, a senior Polish security official has accused Russia of involvement in the migration crisis. Stanislaw Zarin, someone with a remarkably pronounceable name, uh, the director of the National Security Department, also said Russia wants to avoid being linked to the situation, uh, which has seen the migrants trying to cross. Uh, and in his opinion, it's going on with significant Russian support. Well, how else could they have got there? How did yeah. they get to Belarus from the Middle East without going through Russia? It must have had Russian support. There's no question of it, in my opinion. Of course, this is speculation. This is just you know what I think about it. But um, it does appear that the Russians uh, and you know the Belarusians, as a corollary, have worked out what the Achilles' heel of the European Union is, and is essentially forcing them to uh, die on their own principles. And the European Union has turned around and said, well, look, we can't actually afford to do that. And so they're going to have to compromise themselves. These four freedoms that we heard so much about during Brexit, that are apparently immutable. Well, turns out they can be muted. Thanks for watching this clip from the podcast of The Lotus Eaters. We broadcast live on lotuseaters.com at 1pm UK time every weekday. And we also have loads more content that we don't put on YouTube, such as the memes and video comments from our community. Every week we also have new episodes of our regular series, Contemplations and Epochs. In Contemplations, Josh explores interesting and diverse topics, such as the science behind the need for fathers in the home, or why people believe in ghosts and the paranormal. In Epochs, Bo and I go on, often at length, about various events and periods in history that are particularly fascinating. We've just finished a five-part mini-series on the Hundred Years' War, which I particularly enjoyed right up until the end of it when, spoiler alert, the French won. Alongside our excellent team of in-house writers, we also commission articles from outside contributors, and silver and gold tier subscribers have access to an audio recording of each premium article, so you don't have to read it yourself. We interview various contemporary thinkers and entertainers, as well as host the recordings of our live events. We also have a series of premium video content on the site, which we think is particularly worthwhile or we simply can't put on YouTube because their editorial policies prohibit reasonable discussion on the subject. Personally, I think the deep dives we've been doing into critical theory and critical race theory are most important, as we reveal the origins of intersectionality and the plan that the radical left has for our societies. We are funded almost exclusively by our subscribers, so if you'd like to join us in the work we're doing, head over to lotusseaters.com and we'll see you there.